Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about galaxies, what they are and why they are important in the study of astronomy. Let's begin. First off, what exactly is a galaxy? Well, here's the definition we're going to use. A galaxy is a cluster of billions of stars held together by gravity. Pretty straightforward, however there's a couple things I want to point out. First of all, this term billions of stars. That is billions with a B, so we are talking about quite a few of these objects here. Second of all, the term stars. Now we haven't learned details about stars yet, but let's remember that the sun, yep, that massive burning ball of gas in the sky that keeps us nice and warm on Earth, is a star. In fact, it's an average star. And so you can think of a galaxy as billions and billions of suns held together. What holds them together? Well, that's the second part of this. These stars are held together by a force known as gravity. Gravity is a force of attraction that exists everywhere in the universe. Essentially, anything with mass will want to pull closer to anything else with mass. The more mass there is, the more they want to pull together. The closer they are, the more they want to pull together. We'll be learning quite a bit about gravity in the coming days. But just to summarize, a galaxy is a group or a blob of billions of stars which are all held together by this force of gravity. Keep in mind though that there's also a massive amount of empty space between the stars within a galaxy. Let's take a look at a picture. This photograph is of an actual galaxy called NGC 3982. It's a galaxy that is about 68 million light years from Earth, incredibly far away. If you were to go outside tonight and find the famous constellation known as Ursa Major or the Big Bear, part of which is the Big Dipper, within those stars lies this constellation. Though the light is so dim by the time it reaches us on Earth that it's not very easy to see this star. You need high-powered telescopes to get pictures like this. Regardless, it's a good example of a spiral galaxy. You can see its spiral shape. It's got a bright light in the center, known as the galactic center, or the nucleus of the galaxy. And this is thought to be something called a supermassive black hole, which we will also learn about in the coming days. You'll notice how it has this kind of milky appearance, and that's the result of the fact that there are literally billions upon billions of stars in this cluster. Though it's hard to imagine, there's also a huge amount of empty space within what you're looking at right now. This massive object in the universe becomes even more overwhelming and difficult to imagine when you try and think of just how many of these galaxies there are. Take a look at this picture. This is known as the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's an amazing photograph taken by a telescope in space of a seemingly blank portion of the night sky. When astronomers got the photo back and they took a look at it, they said, oh, look at all the thousands of stars we've captured. But upon closer inspection, they realized that these points of light are not stars at all. Rather, each point of light is an entire galaxy. It makes it difficult to imagine the sheer number of stars that exist in the universe, especially because this photograph is just one little patch of the sky. The photo was taken with a telescope known as the Hubble Telescope, which is still in space today, orbiting the Earth and snapping photographs of distant, distant objects in the night sky, out at the very far reaches of the universe. Now, the Hubble has been a wealth of information for astronomers, sending back some of the most amazing photographs you can imagine. One of the issues, however, was the sheer quantity of data sent back by this telescope. It started snapping photos and we got thousands upon thousands of these amazing pictures of these distant galaxies. All unique, but all also having similarities um, and similar qualities about them. Now, this poses a problem in science, as we see quite often, is that when we're faced with large amounts of data, in this case, large numbers of photographs of galaxies, we have to come up with a way of organizing them so that we can make some sense of them. And that's a process in science known as classification. Hopefully you've heard this term before, but I'm going to refresh your memories. Classification is simply grouping similar objects based on some sort of shared characteristic. You've seen lots of examples in science. I'm going to give you a much simpler example right now. 
Imagine we have a whole bunch of playing cards together in a pile, and I want to organize them somehow. Well, there's a lot of things I can do. Let's start with something simple. I could simply place all the red cards in one pile and all the black cards in another, and that would be a simple classification scheme, in this case based on color. But there's other things I could do too. I could classify them according to their suit, putting all the hearts and spades and clubs and diamonds together. That would be another classification scheme. Further yet, I could classify them based on what they are, putting all the face cards together, the queens and kings and jacks, etc., and the number cards, the twos and fours and sevens together. These are just a few examples of classification schemes. Now in the case of galaxies, we had these thousands and thousands of pictures of different galaxies, and scientists studied them at length to try and come up with a good way of grouping them and they decided that the most logical thing to do was to group them according to their shape. That's right, galaxies are classified based on what shape they are. Well, let's look at what shapes exist. It turns out that just about every galaxy we have seen falls into one of three categories of shapes, the first of which is referred to as the spiral galaxies. This is what most people think of when they visualize galaxies, the spiral shape. The second group is known as the elliptical galaxies. This is kind of an oval or egg-shaped galaxy. And then the third group are what we call the irregulars. And this is essentially anything that doesn't have a defined elliptical or spiral shape. Think of it as the others. So there are other shapes out there and there are a lot more details that we could go into. There are different types of spirals and different types of ellipticals, and we've also learned that the shape is a result of how old the galaxy is, but we're not going to go into that in this class. For our purposes, we should just know these three categories. Which brings us to the next thing. Well, what galaxy do we live in? Where is the Earth and the Sun and Mars and the other sol parts of our solar system? Where do we fit in? What is our neighborhood in the universe, if you will? Well. Our galaxy, which includes our sun, the solar system, the Earth, are located in one of the arms of a giant spiral galaxy known as the Milky Way. You've probably heard this term before. Here's a diagram of the Milky Way galaxy. Not a photograph, just a drawing. And you can see its large, massive spiral shape with the arms extending out from the center, which, yes, is a supermassive black hole. The reason we get these spiral arms is because this galaxy is actually spinning, and that causes the shape to result. Let's take a look at some of the statistics of the Milky Way. First off, it's believed to contain somewhere between 1 and 400 billion stars. A large galaxy, but certainly by no means the biggest that we have observed. There are larger ones out there. Think of the Milky Way as an average galaxy. It is a large galaxy, though, in the sense of it takes up a lot of space. Not necessarily bigger than other galaxies, but for our purposes, yeah, it's pretty big. It's approximately 100,000 light years wide and 1,000 light years thick. Now, to give you an idea of how big that is, if you were to go to one edge of the Milky Way galaxy with a really strong flashlight and turn the flashlight on, aiming it across the galaxy, it would take 100,000 years for that beam of light, traveling at the speed of light, the fastest known speed, for that beam of light to reach the other end of the galaxy. It's pretty big. If you were to flip the galaxy on its side and look at it from the edge, it's about a thousand light years thick. So also, it's pretty large. Think of it as a large frisbee. It's kind of like a disk of stars. It's believed to be approximately 13.2 billion years old, and it contains, just like many other galaxies, a large black hole at the center. Just so you know, a black hole is a very, very large star that has died and become very dense, so much so that it's got a really strong gravity and pulls other objects, even energy and light, into it. We'll learn more about black holes in the coming days. But when you see the bright center of these galaxies, it's largely caused by these black holes. Going back to our diagram, you'll notice I've labeled where we think the Sun, the Earth, and the rest of our solar system is within the galaxy. You'll notice it's not in the center, nor is it out at the edge. It's kind of in the middle in one of the spiral arms of the galaxy. Here's another way to visualize this. 
Here's a simple diagram from above, a top view of the Milky Way galaxy, and you notice where the sun is thought to be in one of the spiral arms. If we flip it on its side and look at it from the edge, the side view shows us our disk or our frisbee, and you notice the sun is out towards the edge as well. Now there's one thing to keep in mind. We don't have any photographs of the Milky Way galaxy, and the reason is we are in the Milky Way galaxy. You can't take a picture of something while you are inside of it. For example, if I put you in your bedroom in your house and said take a picture of the outside of your house, well, you can't do that unless you get up and leave the house and then look back at it. Well, the problem is we don't have the technology or the ability to leave the Milky Way galaxy. It's just too far. So that in mind, we've never actually seen what our galaxy as a whole looks like. However, interestingly, in parts of the Earth where there's not a lot of light pollution and you get a good view of the night sky, you can actually look out through the Milky Way galaxy. And that's where we get photographs like this. If you look up at the sky here, you see kind of a milky band across the sky. That is us looking out through our galaxy. You can see it here as well. And yes, this is where the term Milky Way came from, because it looks like this milky band across the sky. So that's basically what we want to know about the galaxies. We want to know what they are, we want to know how they're classified, and a little bit about our galaxy, the Milky Way. Before we leave, let's take a quick zoom out here to give you an idea of scale. Here we are leaving the Earth incredibly fast, and the first object we pass you see there is the Moon. But then we go through a lot, a lot, a lot of empty space. And this is very close to home. The next thing we're going to see at some point is the next planet out, which is the red planet, Mars. There it is now. You can see the Sun off in the distance. After Mars, we're going to pass a large belt of chunks of rock known as the asteroid belt. There it is now. We're going out through the asteroid belt. Now the asteroid belt's cool because it separates the inner planets, called the terrestrials, from the outer planets, like Jupiter, which are called the Jovian planets. Jupiter is a giant gaseous planet. So that's the next planet we will see. That's the first of the four Jovian planets. The next one we'll pass after we go out from Jupiter is Saturn known for its rings and its very oblong shape. After Saturn comes Uranus, which you'll see passing shortly. Now again, keep in mind as we're doing this, we're still in our solar system. We haven't even left our solar system yet. After Uranus comes the final planet in our solar system, which is Neptune. Now out beyond Neptune is another belt of asteroids known as the Oort Cloud. It's basically another band of little chunks of rock and debris. And within that band, you would find what was formerly called a planet, Pluto, which you see passing by right now. This is really the far reach of our solar system. There's our sun. And as we continue to zoom out, you'll see our neighboring stars pass by as we get further and further away until eventually we can start to see the formation of the Milky Way itself. And you see this kind of cloudy appearance. Well, all these dots are billions and billions of stars that make up our galaxy. And as we continue and continue and continue to zoom out, you'll start to see the spiral shape take shape, in the center of which is your supermassive black hole, seen by that bright light in the center. And yes, our galaxy is moving. It is rotating or spinning around that black hole. So not only is the Earth spinning, and not only is the Earth revolving around the Sun, but the Sun is revolving around our galaxy. As we'll learn, the galaxy too is in motion around other galaxies. I think that's a good place to stop. Thanks for listening. See you soon.